We can debate between which ones were for free, like this. Extreme Ops. <laughs> I got this because I heard so much bad shit about it. I cannot believe the guy who directed Screamers has directed this piece of shit. And, uh, you're like, why would you call it a piece of shit? You haven't seen it yet. I know, it sucks. I've seen a trailer. It's a stupid idea. The idea itself is fucking moronic. So I'm pretty sure the movie's gonna suck. The fact that there is no cr fucking reviews from anybody. Look, there's nothing on the back here. There's no critics saying anything. So that means they're not even like Maria Salas for freaking, uh, what, LA, the LA Gazette, I think, or something like that. Not even her is like, you know, like, or from Fox News. Yeah, not even the guy from Fox News is giving it a good review. That must mean this movie sucks pretty fucking, sucks a lot of ass. Extreme Off. This is a stupid title, too. I can't believe this movie actually came out in theaters. This this was shit was released in theaters. I know that because I saw a poster for this at a movie theater one time back when Star Trek Nemesis came out and they were giving free movie posters away. And this was one of the ones that was there. And there wasn't any other ones that I, what, spite my interest that I thought would be good to pick up. But this one was there. I'm like, I don't need no poster of Extreme Ops. I didn't even see the movie. I knew it sucked. So... Whenever I do see this movie, it's just epic rant. I guarantee it. This movie's gonna get torn a new asshole. So, at least I have something to, you know, fucking beat the shit out of later. Extreme Ops. So that's Extreme Ops. Um, here is Murder Rap. Look at this cover. Look at that guy. What the fuck? What kind of pose is that? It's like a fucking fucking fag or gay waters or fucking gay ass fucking pose there uh, I just fucking like pose for the picture this looks like shit I can guarantee I have a lot of movies that are just shit I know they're gonna be shit I don't know why I buy these pieces of shit I guess I'm just a sucker for shit sometimes but it just sounds like a piece of shit I mean there's a plot murder rap it's a, it's a love story it is a story filled with mystery and suspense. It is a story about the deception of murder. It is Christopher and Anna's story. Okay. When a young audio fanatic... <laughs> what? Where did the... For, this whole episode... We, I'll get a drink here. <laughs> Where the fuck did the term audio fanatic come from? Accident, when a young audio fanatic, Christopher, accidentally records a brutal murder, his pursuit of the killer lures him into a sinister plot of revenge and deceit. Murder Rap makes references to Body Heat, Blowout, Double Indemnity, and The Jagged Edge. <laughs> All four movies that are probably better than this piece of shit. Where relationships are based on fatal facades and things that are not and things are not what they seem. Brilliantly directed by newcomer Cliff Cool. <laughs> Cliff Cool? <laughs> Murder Rap is a contemporary love story for today's home video enthusiasts. <laughs> home video enthusiasts? Jesus. Murder Rap is everything you're looking for. Intense action. I can, probably doesn't have intense action. Provocative sex scenes. Maybe, but probably not all that sexy. The slick sensation of today's hottest rock videos. <laughs> what? And a plot so thick it will leave you mesmerized. I guarantee the plot is nothing to it. Murder Rap introduces two rising young stars. International models S. Kathleen Fegeny. Kathleen Fed is her first name really S and the James Dean of the 80s 
John Hawks. <laughs> Who the fuck is John Hawks? Together they make the screen sizzle. Award-winning country music singer David Frizzell makes a guest star's appearance as Detective Tate. David Frizzell? I never even heard of David Frizzell. Jeez. It's see. I mean, hey, it was worth it maybe alone just for that hilarious fucking uh, description on the back there. The James Dean of the 80s. <laughs> I thought you had to be somewhat well known before you could become the James Dean of the eighties. So what does exactly the James Dean of the eighties mean? You're like good looking, and then you're during the next guy is gonna die in a car crash. <laughs> oh, sorry. Anyway, here's a pr <laughs> that's just ridiculous murder rap. Here's prayer for the dying. With Ricky Work, one of his earlier roles. I want to see it again. I haven't a copy of this in Oklahoma. I know I do. It's actually directed by the same guy who directed Flash Gordon, Mike Hodges. Which is hard to believe. You see Flash Gordon if you see, and you've seen trailers for this, you're like, wow. Anyway, basically, it's uh, based on the book by uh, Jack Higgins, and he says it's the best movie made off his work so far, anyway, by the time this was released. A school bus merely speeds past an army caravan. It suddenly explodes. Stunned and horrified, Martin Fallon, Mickey Wark, flees. He had planned. He had planted the bomb for soldiers, not to kill innocent children. Disillusioned, Fallon seeks desperately to escape his violent life. But this move, the movement wants his heart, the mob wants his mind, and the police want his blood. Trapped, all he wants is freedom. Sounds interesting. Sounds pretty good. Huh? And I heard it's really good. Early Mickey Rourke roles, so I'll definitely give it a look sometime. Virgin Vision release. And we got another VHS. This could be another one for free. Take your pick. Final Justice. <laughs> With Joe Don Baker. Look how awesome that is. Look how much of a badass. No, not really. I mean, it's fucking yellow. Look <laughs> at this gay ass color. Yellow! I'm such a badass. I got a yellow. His name is Thomas Jefferson Geronimo. His. <laughs> I'm sorry, Geronimo. His brain of justice doesn't stop at the Texas border. The stellar talents of Joe Don Baker, whose stirring portrayal of the legendary Buford Pusher of Walking Tall and TV's detective Ishid. Ishid? What? Brought him instant acclaim. Uh, what about Mitchell? What about M -M Mitchell? Highlights this fast paced action adventure of Texas Sheriff determined to apprehend mafia killers. Thomas Jefferson Geronimo the third. Oh, oh, not not just the first. He's the third. Thomas Jefferson Geronimo is a deputy sheriff working in a small town in South Texas when Joseph Palmero and his brother Anthony, two mafia hitmen, attempt to escape across the border into Mexico. Geronimo moves into action with lightning speed. He kills Anthony and captures Joseph. But Geronimo's fight with the underworld isn't over yet. He's ordered to escort Palmero back to his native country. Italy, but Geronimo is prepared, unprepared for the battle that awaits him as Palmero's cohorts plan for their unexpected arrival and plot to halt this and plot to halt this final justice. <laughs> probably the final shit. <laughs> probably a piece of shit. We'll find out. It's pretty fucking bad. <laughs> Geronimo. Here we have a classic, The Burbs. Great movie, underrated. I think this is actually... I got it right this time. I remember the last video, one video I had with this VHS in Oklahoma. I said it was the original release. I think this is the original release. Right with the MCA video logo on it. And it's got the intro for the opening of Universal Studios Florida. So I think this is the original one, not the other one. And it says 89 on it. So... So this is the Burbs, classic movie, hilarious. Joe Dante did a great job. And speaking of Joe Dante, what the hell happened to him, man? Directing shit, like movie, directing fucking movies like the Hole. Yeah, he's directing movies about holes, man. Directing movies about people's assholes, man. It's just sad, sad, sad state of affairs. In a way, this is this is the Burbs. I'll definitely give this a look tonight and review it again. 
I give it a look again. Probably with the money pit, because I have to review that again, thanks to NBC Universal. Anyway, here is another movie, Daybreak, with Cuba Gooding Jr. And uh, it's like direct to video, HBO uh, premiere or something. HBO something. They had like a special HBO logo in the beginning, like HBO premiere or something like that. It's like a, they had like a TV movie. Starring Cuba Gooding Jr., Moira Kelly from uh, Cutting Edge, and Omar Epps and Marfa Plimpton. Basically, the plot is, in the not-too-distant future, America has been ravaged by a deadly epidemic sweeping the country. To contain it, the government has instituted a nationwide quarantine for victims of the disease, promising them care, but imprisoning them to die. Blue, Moira Kelly, more like Moira Kelly is unaware of this atrocity until she stumbles upon a brand of rebel a band of rebels rescuing the innocent victims and offering them freedom and medical care. She soon falls for the rebel leader Torch, Cuba Gooding Jr., and is seduced into working with the group. But her friend Lori, Martha Plimpton, thinks she knows what's good for her, and soon Torch and his gang are lurked into a deadly trap. Lured into a deadly trap. Not lurked. Is, is all their hard work, shared past, and devotion to the cause would be destroyed by the ill-conceived actions of an er ignorant few? And this explosive thriller, you may wait to, have to wait till daybreak to find out. So this is daybreak. Sounded interesting. Here's the Hudsucker Proxy with Tim Robbins, Jennifer L Jason Leigh, and Paul Newman. It's a movie I've been wanting to see for a while. It looked really good. I like Tim Robbins. He's a great actor. So and directed by Joel Cohen. I think it's also produced by Ethan Cohen. Oh, you know, so it's a Joel and Ethan Cohen production. So, the Hutsucker Proxy. It's got a nice, fun little comedy period, size period piece. Here's Homeboy with Mickey Rourke. This isn't the screening copy. The one ever copy that I have is a screening copy. I do have a few issues with this tape, though. It looks like it might have some mold in it, so it might be a might be one of those tapes that's a loss. So, but I didn't pay much for it, so. But it does look like a good movie, and I have the soundtrack on cassette, but anyway, this is Homeboy with Mickey Rourke, who plays a boxer, another early Mickey Rourke film. Too bad about the mold, I don't know how, what I'm going to do about it. Uh, speaking of, I'll show you these last few tapes and I'll tell you about a tape that I got that, it's a pretty funny story. Uh, anyway, because I don't have it with me because I, I basically uh, got rid of it. Uh, this is the Peace Big Keeper. It's a rental box. It's cut. Rental tape, so the box is cut. But this is actually a pretty solid uh, Dolph Lundgren flick. With Roy Scheider and Montel Williams, of all things. Yeah, the talk show host. I remember having a lot of fun with this one. Solid Dolph Lundgren action flick. Peacekeeper. And then we have another cut box. This is The Chain with Gary Busey. And... Uh, I think that's Patrick Burgeon. No, I don't. Th it's not Patrick Burgeon. It's some other guy. It looks like Patrick Burgeon, but it isn't. This is the chain. Uh, this is this is uh, basically the plot is a cop Gary Busey takes his wife on a supposed vacation of South America. However, the true intentions of a trip are to capture the elusive arms dealer he has chased at for after for years. In an interesting twist of fate, the two enemies are chained together as prisoners in a work camp and must fight as a team in order to survive a bigger enemy who seeks to kill them both. It's directed by Luca Bervacci. Uh, I think it's done some other stuff, but I can't remember it at the moment. But it sounds interesting. So like interesting idea. Interesting flick. So that's The Chain with Gary Busey. And here's the last VHS of this update. I have more VHS tapes, but... Um, yeah, that that'd be an another video. Anyway, uh, because I'll let you guys know right at the bat, I'm doing an inventory on all my movies. So I'm going to start with my DVDs. And so what I'm going to do once I sort out all my DVDs alphabetically, so if I sort out all my DVDs from with you know titles to start with A, I'm just going to do a quick video showing all my DVDs to start with A. And then once I get done with all my DVDs, I'm going to start doing my laser discs. And then after I'm done with those, then I'm going to start doing my VHS tapes. So basically, I'm going to show you my entire VHS collection eventually. The ones that I have here, anyway. And then newer ones I might get up down the stretch. I'll just uh, do a separate update.